I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with that super millennial, David Barreto, giving us the millennial perspective. How you doing today, Big Dave? I'm doing good. So, Big David, what you been up to, pal? Labels. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to let that down. <laughs> so, that's not what we're talking about. So, you're on a journey, huh? You want to talk about your journey a little bit or you want to keep it private? Uh, no, I think um, I'll share it with the uh, Stress Mastery family here. Um, so, as you guys heard and seen on Facebook and the community, Bill decided to do a bodybuilding competition 30 years after he's done his last one, right? 30 well, years. I started to think about it and, you know, seeing how Bill always says you should push your body, push your limits at least one time in your life. I've never actually had to do that. Everything, I kind of coasted, been pretty good with genetics, got through everything, and I, I decided that I wanted to push myself at least once. So, um, I decided to do a powerlifting competition that's three days after my 28th birthday um, just to see what it does to not only the health category because it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be, you know, consistent, but I think it's going to help morph and change all of the categories uh, surrounding that because if you're, if you're falling in the rest of them, you're not going to be able to maintain that one to the high degree that you're going to need to for me to actually try to win. So like competition, you have you actually have to drop weight to make weight class, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah because there's there's weight classes and everything. So powerlifting like bodybuilding takes a tremendous amount of discipline and time and focus. And that and I think Brett's gonna compete in his first uh powerlifting show also this year sometime, and that should be awesome to see too. So it's kinda it's good to watch you doing this because I'm watching you work. I'm watching by the way, I'm watching my protein go down quickly. <laughs> I'm watching my protein containers <laughs> missing what, what's that all about hey you know how you, we were talking about this week vibrations well you started it and it's vibrated there through the go. entire house so now. we got it and that is our vibration is our topic this week's topic is vibration at today's meeting of the minds i would like to have a discussion on what is called the atomic moment so i was reading a book and he had such a wonderful idea in the book called the atomic moment moment. It comes from the book Chasing Daylight. It was written by Pastor Erwin Raphael McManus. And in the book, he explained that as human beings, we are always tethered to time. Now, I'm going to put this into my words and not Pastor McManus's words um, and my understanding of what Pastor McManus was teaching. So we can understand that we are spiritual beings and if you really understand this, this makes us timeless and eternal, correct? Yeah. So we can say that, and, and yes, it is a truth, and I believe it's a truth, yet we cannot dispute the fact that we still have to live in a world that is ruled by time. Mm -hmm. So as a human being, we are each born into this world with a purpose and a specific aim to expand our energy, our talents, or as we called it this week, vibration. And this is to serve ourselves in growth and expansion, thus serving humanity. Now we can only serve ourselves and humanity in the eternal now, or what McManus calls the atomic moment. This atomic moment is connected to the eternal now and the high vibration of expansion and growth. This is simply being in the green zone energies. Atomic moments are explosive. Think of atomic energy and they're explosive in vibration. And these moments are what creates that connection to the master mind. If we look at this connection, we have the head, the cage mind. In this connection, the cage mind serves our aim to expand with skills and habits that support the atomic moment or being in the now. And then this connects us to the heart or the creation mind, which 
is our connection to our true self and our purpose. And this puts us in connection with the super conscious mind, which allows us to merge with the possibility of the all and the universe. And this connection creates the mastermind or the hand. And that head, heart, hand connection in the atomic moment is the integrity of behavior. This is the atomic moment. This is the eternal now. Now, this atomic moment is what builds your future. See, if we understand what we've talked about so far this week, we build our reality through our vibration. So if you desire to change today's reality, if you desire to change your life today, you have to slow down and realize you can only accomplish this in the atomic moment and raising your current vibration. Your thoughts on this? Um, it's something to really realize when you see that you're bringing it in into your, your life daily. You know, the, the conversations that you have to the things that you tune in on social media, all these things. And, and it's always, why is this always happening to me? Well, it's the constant repeat of what you're bringing. In. Absolutely. You don't change your vibration yeah. and you, we build our reality through our vibration. So let's slow it down a little bit. What's your, what's your deadlift right now? Um, I haven't gone over 415 yet. Okay. So when you're deadlifting 415 pounds and you're ready to pull that bar up, what you thinking about? If it comes down, it's going back up. You know, you don't think about nothing, though, no. right? Mm-hmm. Right? That's the atomic moment. That's the now. Yeah. You go in there and you do it. Mm-hmm. And if you can do it by lifting 415 pounds, you could do it by working on the labels, working on this, <laughs> doing labels. this, those damn labels, right? <laughs> so that's what, that's what it is. If you want to change, we build our reality through our vibration. So to change your life, You have to change your vibration. Now, Pastor McManus also talked about what he called wasted moments. Mm -hmm. So we have atomic moments and we have wasted moments. And that's the only time that human being has. Wasted moments is when that moment is spent in worry or that moment is spent in anger or regret. And that is a challenge for us. The challenge for us human beings is we rarely enter the atomic moment. We have this belief that we have so much time to do what we really want to do. So we have a tendency to put off today what we can do tomorrow or sometime in the future. This is putting off the atomic moment. And it's living in wasted moments. The life you live, this very moment, is a reflection of the vibration you hold. If you hold a vibration of worry, you must bring worry into your reality. The very thing you worry about must become matter. We're talking about it in our book study, A Happy Pocket Full of Money. This is what he's teaching us. And most of us are trapped in our life of our own making. Yet, we are unaware of this fact. The ideas we hold in mind of what should be is passed on and held in the collective consciousness of how we see the world. David, your thoughts on that? Yeah, it, it, it reminds me, like you said, what are you thinking? while you're doing this there's been so many times where i've worked out with other people and like i can't do that i'm like nope now you can't nope the moment you said that is you can't do it now because even if you maybe can't you keep on going you keep pushing through i've done i've been able to do things i didn't know i could do just because i thought it and then i've tried the same thing with the different thought process and you can't like he says the wasted and not wasted it's just do's and don'ts are you going to do it or you're not going to do it? And that's, we're going to actually talk about that today because that's the truth. Understand when this collective consciousness, right? When, when we live in this collective consciousness, we live our lives in wasted moments. Now, please let me clarify this. When you live in the collective consciousness, you're living in stage three socialized mind. 
That's when we live in worry, frustration, anger, and regret. And we're in hope for a better tomorrow. Now, if one is to step into their atomic moment and begin to take action outside that collective consciousness, I will guarantee you there will be disruption. Mm -hmm. The atomic moment goes against the agreements set by the collective. And this will make you feel very uncomfortable. So in the beginning, when you make this decision of stepping into the atomic moment, you will feel incredible resistance. You are going against the agreement set in all your relationships, even with the agreement set with yourself and your identity, which is the ego. So you understand the moment you try to make this change, you're going to feel disruption. Yeah. And, and you brought it up, but that was the first thing that happened to me when I decided that I wanted to uh, try powerlifting. Yep. It's a, it was most, uncomfortable and I'm used to lifting weights. Yep. It's, it's, it's the same getting ready for the show, <laughs> right? I thought I knew what I was doing until I started, you know, and it's been, it's been two months and now I'm really adapting well, mm -hmm. I mean, but it's been two months, you yeah. know, you saw me trying to crawl up the stairs and <laughs> poor Nicole in the, in the community talking about how she worked her legs and she threw up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just threw up the other day too. Yeah, but, I understand that but, one. But bodybuilders think that's a badge of, you know, we're kind yeah, of messed up. A little weird, but I, I was really happy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> explain it so when we look at this right we look at this process our relationships when we have these agreements with relationships we have our own agreement with our own relationship with ourself our identity and we have the wants of approval and to belong and these wants of approval and to belong create a desire to impress and be liked by others and this is what drives our vibration to distraction we begin using our moments into unending streams of status updates. We're seeking to be filled. We're seeking to fill our page with impressive stories of our lives so we can get likes. And when we do that, those are wasted moments. Then there's the want of control. And this drives us to defend and attack anything and anyone. If something doesn't meet our expectation, we are attacking it. We create Wasted moments through grievances and resentments that make us feel regret. This restricts our vibration and locks us into living our life, our past, over and over again. And there's that want of security, David. This is, the want of security is the killer of the momentum. This is what brings doubt and worry into our moments. The want of security destroys the atomic moment because this is the need to fight anything that may bring change into your life. This want of security sets the collective consciousness. This is what creates the collective consciousness and is set in the collective wisdom of the masses of how everything should work, correct? Yeah. So if we look at this, Dave, we build our reality through our vibration. Our vibration is set through our moments. Our moments are either atomic moments when we are in expansion and creation, or our moments are wasted moments when we are worried, irritated, or regretful. So. To change our reality is simply to change our vibration. Your take. Yeah, I, I've noticed when I decide to make a change, any change, I mean, career, school, whatever it was, um, I always got excited, got scared, got really, really uncomfortable, and then thought about going back. That security of, I, uh, wow. no, can, no, no, maybe on the wrong Can path. you go through that again? Because that's exactly the, the way the pattern goes. Yeah, I, I, you get excited. Yep. It's kind of like that passion hits like something's yep. new. First excitement, then? You get scared. <laughs> then you get scared because it's normal. You're yeah. going against that want of security comfort zone. Then? You want to revert back to your comfort there zone, you back go. to normal. And, and it happens every time. I mean, literally everything I've ever tried started in that pattern. 
And then it was a matter of me doing or not doing. And continue. most people fall back in that exact pattern. And I'm going to talk about that in a, in a few moments here. But it's that awareness that that is the pattern. See, our vibration is determined by our moments. And our moments are set through our consciousness. Human consciousness reacts with matter and vibration. Now, quantum physics has scientifically proven that statement. Human consciousness reacts with matter and vibration. So in past episodes, I have discussed the double slit experiment, the quantum physics experiment. This is the experiment that passes light through two side-by-side -side slits behind a curtain and the, and the light lands on a screen behind it. Now, what happens next is dependent on if someone is observing the light or not observing the path of the light. If no one is observing the light, the light behaves in a wave-like pattern and will create an interference pattern on the screen. Now, if somebody's watching or observing the light, that's consciousness, people, the light will behave like particles creating a bullet-like pattern on the screen. This experiment showed that light, just light, and human consciousness are linked without exception. Now, how does your consciousness affect your vibration and everything in your life. Think about that mm -hmm. for a second. We have to slow down and really observe this. It's everything. This is everything because your state of consciousness is what determines if you will create an atomic or wasted moment. Wasted moments are when we become unconscious. We then are in a state of event judgment reaction and basically the ego has taken conscious mind control every wasted moment is lost you cannot get it back every single time you procrastinate it's lost every single time you worry the moment is lost this is how time affects the human being every person lives in the potential to live in peace. Yet most people are frightened, worried, they live in overwhelm and in rage. And when you're in that state, time seems to move at breakneck speeds. There seems never to be enough time, too much to do. Yet time is still only real in the moment. So if time is, I'm gonna ask you this, David, if time can only be real in the moment, how can we become overwhelmed? Because we keep on trying to hold on to it. Or we're trying to go to moments that haven't happened yet or moments that have happened already. Right? We are overwhelmed because we are rarely or ever present. And this creates a restricted vibration. Remember, we build our reality through our vibration. You're overwhelmed. When you're overwhelmed, this creates a restricted vibration and it feels like we're being squeezed. The ego speeds up time in our heads and we feel like we're out of control. And the ego seeks validation through status. This drives behavior, seeking to be seen and protecting our identity. This equals wasted moments. The ego has a need to be frightened, so you will seek safety. Equals wasted moments. The ego has a need for worry. So you will try to control outcome equals wasted moments. The ego has a need for rage. So you will defend an attack equals wasted moments. The ego has a need to feel regret. So you believe that you are guilty equals wasted moments. If you live with the ego in charge, Life will move very, very quickly, yet nothing ever seems to change. Your thoughts on that, Dave? I have to pat myself on the back. That was pretty good. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I think too many people think that 
thinking about something is making a change or doing something. Cause like that, this, this whole episode, like I said, it reminds me of do's and don'ts. That's like the only two things that you do thinking isn't doing. Nope. Ever. And I think people think that that's actually something. It's like, I thought about it. You think about the wrong moments first off. Yeah. They write it out or they read a book yeah. or they take if you're in the thing, moment you're doing it. Yeah. You're not changing. Yeah. Unless you, if you feel you've been trapped by the ego, right. And are living wasted moments, you have to understand that this is the collective consciousness. People, most people are living that way. To break this begins with one thing by making a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a choice to slow down. It's a moment of truth. That crossroads that we have been speaking about. The moment is the only time we have. We build our reality through our vibration. It is a choice to set our vibration into expansion and create atomic moments. Or it's a choice to allow our vibration to settle in restriction and live in wasted moments. It is a choice, people. So, got some plan here for you. Let's get you out of that. Number one. If you want to get into atomic moments, number one, live your moments with purpose. Discover your purpose. Learn how to set higher goals. And then set your focus for each day. De be become determined to live your life in a focus of growth to live atomic moments. Take a stand and get clear what you want out of life. Then execute the plan one day at a time, creating action behavior based in atomic moments. And this is a decision to live your life with purpose. That's number one. You have to connect to the creation mind. We're talking about what are atomic moments. They're moments of expansion. That's when you create. When do you create? Connected to the heart, purpose, and creation mind. Number two, stop making excuses. You must stop blaming others for your life. This keeps you stuck in lower vibration. End the defend and attack and accept responsibility. Drop the identity of victim. You control your vibration by your state of consciousness. No one can lower this. Only you can lower it. You build your reality through your vibration. Make a choice to never be a victim and never let anybody lower your vibration. That's number two. Number three, stop comparing yourself to others. To live a life in atomic moments, you must focus. The collective consciousness is not where you want to live. Stop worrying about your Facebook status or what your friends are doing. Stop the dialogue that it's too late or I should have done this or I'm not smart enough. We do not raise our vibration or change our reality through our intellect. That's what David just said. We do not raise our vibration or change our reality through our intellect. It's done through vibration, which is done through action. It's doing, it's failing, it's getting back up. It's focusing on the atomic moments. It's enjoying the process. Number four, drop your history and all haters. Your <laughs> life is your life. Only you can do the work. Only you can have the courage. Only you can change your reality. Nothing outside you can raise your vibration. Raising your vibration is an inside job. Don't talk about your worries or fears or doubts. Ever. Never let those words come out. Don't tell people about your plans unless you have solid support around you. Or if Bill puts you on the spot. Sorry. <laughs> Why don't you want to tell anybody? Because they will lower your vibration faster than anything else on the planet. Surround yourself with those who seize atomic moments. Protect your vibration with everything you've got. And number five, 
We build our reality through our vibration. Take action now. Do not talk about what you're going to do. Don't just plan out what you're going to do. The ego will create wasted moments with hesitation, avoidance, and procrastination. David, you gave the order. Right when it's time to take action, that's when you hesitate. Why? Because that's how the ego survives. You must jump in, live your life consciously, be determined to be atomic, explosive, and let the world know that you have arrived. And you let the know, you let the world know that you have arrived. This is not done through words. It's vibration. You take action. Say yes to things that you may resist, but will feed your atomic moments. Say no to things you really don't want to do. You're just saying yes to them because you feel you have to. Take care of yourself. Work on you. Make you a priority. Make a bucket list. A real bucket list. Dream big for atomic moments to enhance and build a higher vibration. You have to have atomic dreams. Dream big. Spend time in nature. We talked about it yesterday. Become flexible and willing to be open. In other words, when you start your course, living your atomic moments, understand you're not trying to control those moments. You have to flow like a river or a stream flowing through the rocks, throwing everything, but keep on moving. And I'm going to close it with this. Every single day, learn one new thing. Expansion is momentum. Atomic moments is expansion. That's how you build your future. We build our reality, reality through our vibration. If you raise your vibration today, you have already changed your reality tomorrow. If you raise your vibration every single day, you will build a life that you have no idea how amazing that that can be. All of that becomes a skill and a habit and you start to build momentum. That's why success breeds success. Mm -hmm. Super millennial. Yeah, I think uh, people need to... Um stop thinking so much and start doing a little bit more. Um, and I think me and you kind of show like a, a perfect example of it's never too late and it's never too early to start something that you really want to go ahead and, and put out. But um, the thing about what you said about telling people your plans or telling people your goals and stuff, mm -hmm. I saw a really good quote about, you know, your friends want to see you eat. They just don't want to see you eat more than them. And that's why like your internet friends will support you more than your close friends. And I think that's a big thing. That's the reason why I share, you know, with a bunch of people on the podcast, there's thousands of people listening right now, right? I don't get that feedback all the time. I get mm -hmm. emails here and there about certain things and, but it's for you to take in and digest, not to give me feedback, you know, Hey, good job. Or, Hey, that's not going to work. I think when you have a support system where you can, really you know confide in somebody like the community is a great place i could post anything in there and feel 100 percent comfortable that if i do get advice or certain criticism it is because i'm blind to not being able to see it uh, but i think that's a huge thing in wasted opportunities because it may be a great idea but the moment you tell the wrong person and they put it in your head that it's not a good idea that becomes a wasted opportunity even though it's still the right opportunity they will so in a community, we have a, a wonderful young lady, and she's been with us from the beginning, Denny Jordan. Mm -hmm. And Denny Jordan is very successful in her career, but she's been working on becoming a speaker for a long time, right? And so she worked at Toastmasters, worked very hard, and then all of a sudden the pandemic hits, of course, you know, kind of takes speakers off their path. Well, she did a talk, and I was shocked in the community. So she did a talk, and I asked, would you post a talk? And she posted the video. Do you know how many people in that community stopped to watch her entire talk to give her feedback? Mm -hmm. And you know what? Not everybody will do that, right? And I was just like, everybody. And I enjoyed her talk. I've watched her from the beginning when I met her at an event, and I've watched her grow. And that is her seizing the atomic moments. And she's saying, remember what she, in the post, she said, there's a hundred things I can see I did wrong. No, yeah. no, no, that's okay. 
You did the atomic moment, man. You're in there. And it's okay to always critique yourself to improve, but always give yourself a little bit of love for having the courage to do it. That's what it is. We're never, perfection is not there. But I do the same thing. David will tell you, I look at every single talk I do and see, oh, okay, I can improve that. Oh, I can move that. And and she was fantastic. But that's, that's the idea of having a support community, right? Mm-hmm. Other people, you know, and she talks, her story was pretty incredible because she's never had any support through her whole story, <laughs> right? Her whole life, she's never had support. And then watching how, because in the community, people had to stop, take time, go, and because her talk was in there, find her talk and listen to it. And and I was amazed. Yeah, I, stop trying to think that everything needs to be perfect time. Perfection is Rush. this. Put something out and give it a try. If you don't believe us, go back to episode one. No, don't. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I, 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 and, and me and you still listen to the podcast every single day after. Every day. And we I always say, hey, day. yesterday the, the volume didn't sound this. Or, yeah. hey, there's always things to work on, but work on it in a forward and not let it like stop you or like pull you back. And the reason, I, I, you're right. I listen to podcasts every single day. Same. The reason is... I want to hear if the message is coming across right. I want to hear that I'm doing my job. My job is to inspire, motivate, and educate you. That's my job, right? And I want to say, if well, that message isn't clear. And I'll come back to David. I'll say, well, I'm not really, this message wasn't clear. Some of them I think are terrible. They come out good, you know? <laughs> I mean, but it's, it's for me to really perfect my messaging to you guys. That's why you, if you go back and you go back even... 40 episodes you'll hear the change there's always mm-hmm. a change as, as we're as we're working on messaging so people can understand that's that's part of that's an atomic moment yeah mm-hmm. the jokes are always better the second day too just, they're always, always and laugh, you know it's funny because like when we talk we don't realize what what we're saying all the time the next day i'm like ah oh, that was a really good drop the mic moment like yesterday i was like that was a great time to insert that and in the moment i'm not thinking a lot of the emails we get is about us because (laughs) and and, and so you guys know david has no idea what i'm going to talk about he knows the obviously he knows the topic and he knows that it's going to be he has we do no rehearsal he has nothing because i want the millennial perspective if he doesn't understand it it makes me slow down so I can explain it a little mm-hmm. bit better, right? Yeah. And so... <laughs> yeah, and I have no problem saying, um, yeah, go ahead, repeat that, or yeah. go ahead. But like like I said, it's just trying to learn it and the trying to engage about? it. <laughs> All right, so, so you got this one, right? I thought this was good. This is, I, you knocked it out the park. And I, I It'll real, sound better tomorrow. I really like uh, Pastor McManus. I really do. Um, I want to say the church is called Mosaic Church. Um, and his name is Pastor Erwin Raphael McManus. The book that this came out of, um, what was the name of that book? Ch- Ch- Chasing Daylight. It was called Chasing Daylight. He's written several books. Let me tell you something. He is a heck of a speaker. I really enjoy listening to his books and everything else. So that's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe to the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.